Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this Ag Forecast, brought to you by Agribull, the Makers of Money Farm Report. Our software gives growers the insights to make the best decisions possible about their operations. Well, the weekend was uh, not so great for most of those people in the eastern half of the country. We saw the development of a large low-pressure system that moved from basically the central plains through the Great Lakes and on off to the northeast. And as it did so, not only did it bring some severe weather to the eastern part of the Corn Belt along with a lot of rain, but it dragged a cold front through here that really brought temperatures plummeting over what they were at the end of the week last week. We can kind of see the remnants of that here as we look into our kind of all-hazards map here from weather.gov, showing you that that cold front has clearly sagged all the way through the southeast we now have some freeze warnings down here across the states of Mississippi, Alabama, getting back into Georgia and South Carolina. So it's going to be a very chilly night, uh, and we're expecting to see temperatures drop down pretty low uh, right here. And honestly, that's where it really gets us going. We're going to be on quite a roller coaster ride over the next 10 days or so, and this is just the very beginning of it. Now, that cold front is right now positioned way out here, out in the middle of the Atlantic, stretching all the way back down into parts of the Gulf of Mexico. We can see that high pressure is dominated behind this, and that's kind of that overall uh, clockwise flow you see that I'm kind of outlining here. So with that, we've seen the ushering in of quite a bit of cold air. But as that came through, as this front came racing across the eastern half of the Corn Belt, we saw quite a bit of severe weather. Here's an animation of the lightning strikes that we saw uh, on Saturday. And you can clearly see here there was quite a bit of lightning with that squall line as it moved through. And as it did so, it even brought some severe weather uh, through uh, parts of the eastern Corn Belt, really getting into parts of Tennessee, Kentucky, and even northern Alabama. Saw quite a few blue dots in here indicating wind speeds over 58 miles an hour. So that squall line meant business as it came through. And we talked about this. We were discussing how as that system matured, uh, it had the potential, even though the atmosphere wasn't going to really destabilize too much, the lifting and the forcing was strong enough to really just outdo that and, and produce a, a pretty potent little squall line that moved through, producing some stronger winds. But the bigger picture here, I think if we just step back and look at all of agriculture, is that we have had the eastern half of the Corn Belt uh, be very, very wet. This is your last seven days of accumulated precipitation. And we see that a lot of folks, where I, I've seen fields in this area that are still still need to get that corn out. A lot of these folks are going to have another few days. We're going to have to be patient because the last seven days has been extremely wet. Two, three, maybe approaching four inches of rain in some locations here. Meanwhile, the West Coast has also been slammed with some pretty strong onshore flow, uh, bringing quite a bit of snowpack to the mountains and even quite a bit of rain into the lower lying areas. In fact, if we just check in really quickly out west what our basin average snow water content is. Now, this is early in the year, but we can see that the Sierra Nevadas are reporting between 200 and nearly 400 percent of average on snowfall. Getting up into parts of Oregon and Washington, a lot of, you know, above 100s is what you see here, meaning that we've got quite a bit of snowfall in this part of the season. Uh, this, of course, is much more important to look at once you get into January, February, and March. But I just want to show you some early season snowpack. Where it has been dry has been under that large ridge, and we can see a lot of the stations reporting in the four corner states are below that 100% mark, meaning that it's been quite dry down there. We're going to take a closer look at that in just a few moments. Now, the last 30 days shows you uh, here in terms of percent of normal precipitation shows you how wet the eastern corn belt has been so my graphics go up to 200 percent of normal you can see that almost all of michigan indiana ohio eastern half or sorry western half of pennsylvania and the getting back down in west virginia kentucky and tennessee uh, we've really really been wet here whereas the western corn belt has been relatively dry for most of that time period in fact when you get all the way down here to those four corner states where we just saw the mountain snowpack so low we can see that some locations are at zero percent of normal precipitation over the last 30 days so very dry under the presence of that ridge and we're going to talk about that ridge in more detail in a few moments but let's take a quick look at our u.s drought monitor you know we've been dealing with the drought here in parts of montana the dakotas now for months this established in june and it is still taking some time to erode away but that drier pocket that you've seen down there in parts of Missouri and Arkansas, getting back into Texas and even parts of Louisiana and Mississippi, I'm getting concerned about this because if we don't see a bit of a shift in the overall flow of the jet stream moving into the next, let's call it 60 days, where we start to bring in some systems that where the, where the trough digs out west, producing a big time low pressure system that kind of goes moving through, you know, central plains into the Ohio River Valley, this drought won't have much of a chance to be relieved. And I start to care about that at this time of year. I just watch it, I should say, because if this develops uh, over the coming months, this is something to be kind of, uh, you know, just to be looking at as we move into our next growing season. So nothing much right now. Just want you all to know that I'm watching it and you should be watching it as well. Plus, when I give you a look at the forecast for the next month, you'll see that the same area has a chance of being drier than average. 
So let's take a look at kind of global, uh, you know, near term recent drought. First, I got to show you this. I'm going to take you to this place over here called Vladivostok. Uh, it's located way over here, just north of the Korean Peninsula. And uh, you're seeing here uh, uh, some, some snow on top of some ice. And, uh, you know, this, I'm just showing you this because I want folks to remember we're on our way towards winter here in the U.S. and we get stuff like this around here as well. Uh, but this was a, a pretty, um, you know, a, a pretty big snowfall event on top of some ice. And by the way, Vostok means east. So when you're thinking about this, you know, way over here in the eastern part of Russia, uh, that's what we're talking. Now, when you look at the map that's in the back, background. The color coding is showing you above normal precipitation in the blues, and those warmer colors would be below normal precipitation over the last 30 days. And this is coming from the CPC. So you can clearly see those drier pockets in the U.S., which we just talked about. We'll come back to South America in a few minutes, but we've seen major improvements in their drought situation. Things I'm on the lookout for, part of India has been quite dry over the last 30 days. China's major growing regions have been quite dry as well, and parts of Australia have been dry too. Now, while I say all of that, the northern hemisphere, if you really focus on, on Siberia and getting into northern Canada, parts of Alaska have been very, very wet. I mean, we've had quite a bit of snowpack in those areas. So uh, that's kind of an important overall picture to just keep in the back of our minds as we try to understand how our weather patterns are going to evolve in the near term. So speaking of that, let's take a look at the current kind of position and future position here of our jet stream. Let's get right back in here starting off on Monday. That colder air that we've seen sweeping through behind that big front, well, we can see it's still occupying a lot of the northeast on Monday. But as we move forward here, I want you to see, we're going to see this pattern set up such that a big ridge evolves over the western United States, really centered over the southwest. And that keeps them warm and dry. Uh, but we're going to keep seeing a few rotating shortwave troughs coming through the Great Lakes area, keeping kind of reinforcing shots of cold air. So here's the one on Tuesday going into the northeast. Uh, and we're seeing another one here in a couple of days. But look at this. See this big ridge over the southwest? I want to know what this is going to be doing over the coming weeks, because if that ever shifts toward the east, which it might possibly do, that will bring with it quite a bit of warmth and some drier conditions. So we have to keep a lookout on that. But by the way, here we go into Wednesday. And by the time we get into Thursday, honestly, this is about as quiet of a weather pattern as we could ask for for Thanksgiving. What I mean by that is you would not want to see a deep trough here over the western United States in a huge ridge over the east. Because between a ridge and a trough, you have, I'm sorry, try that again. Between a trough and a ridge, you have a big time chance of developing a big low pressure center going right through the middle part of the country toward the northeast. And that is not what we're seeing for Thanksgiving. So big travel day. Thankfully, we're not going to be seeing that. But look at this. Northeast gets another big shot of cold air on Friday. But that pesky ridge sticks around in the southwest United States. As we continue to move forward, this is next weekend, so Saturday, still a lot of folks celebrating Thanksgiving. Look at that, another shot of cold air coming in from the Northeast. But the central states and the Southwest stay warm. Now, where things get interesting, now again, this is one run from the, from the GFS, where things get interesting get us to, let's call it next Tuesday and Wednesday of the following week. So I'm talking out here almost the end of the month of November. If the models have correctly found the position of this trough right here, this is that situation I just described, one that I get quite concerned about, because that trough would produce a big time low pressure center that goes spinning here in the middle part of the country. This is one that will bring severe weather to the south, heavy rains to the east, and a big time snow feature on the back side of this low. So we got to watch out for this. Again, we're way out in the future here. I just want you to be kind of aware of what I'm watching, because if this really does show up as the way the models have been suggesting recently, this is again 10 days away from when I'm recording this video late on Sunday night, uh, that's an important feature to watch out for. Now, let's talk about those cold shots of air the Northeast is going to get and compare that to the central states in the West. We just watched 10 days of temperature anomalies being forecast. So let's get back to Monday. Here we go. That trough over the Northeast, keep things cold. Southeast, keep things cold down there as well. But we start to see that on Tuesday, uh, you know, we're going to see a quick shot of warmer air behind that trough. But another feature moves. Remember, we just kept saying these reinforcing shots of cold air coming around that deeper trough over the Hudson Bay. Here's the next one for Wednesday morning. But again, see what the ridge is doing in the southwest, keeping things warm there. Now, by the time we get into Thanksgiving, this is 12 a.m. on Thanksgiving, so this is early in the morning, we can, we're going to see some warm air start to spread back toward the east from the central states. So by the time we get into, uh, let's see here, this would be 12 a.m. Friday, so a lot of you will probably be in a turkey coma at this point. Again, early, early in the morning on Friday. Look at that, really warm in the central states with that ridge, but still dealing with some colder air from that next trough that kind of rotates through the broader trough feature over the Hudson Bay. 
But look at this, for our weekend, this is next week on the 25th, see the warm air surging across the central part of the country? That's when that ridge begins to kind of expand a little bit. And as we get all the way out into when I'm getting really concerned about the potential for more severe weather, again, Wednesday the, the 29th, this is when the trough digs in out west, pushing a lot of warm, moist, and potentially unstable air into the central part of the country. We need to watch that. I'll update you at least twice before this event ever gets here. So we'll keep a close eye on that in the future forecasts. Now, you'll like to see this. This is an animation of the next 10 days uh, looking at precipitation you know, and weather systems moving across the country. Because we are really honing in on a big ridge over the south, what you see here, I'll just animate it again, is there's just no major low pressure systems going racing through the middle part of the country causing major problems. This is the point that I'm getting concerned. See the low that's developing here now. This is Wednesday the 29th. So again, we're 10 days out. There's a big dome of high pressure sitting here. That means the clockwise circulation around that will feed that moisture in and it'll spiral around this low here. And that's the one I'm watching. A lot of uncertainty, but I'm going to keep a close, close eye on this one moving forward. Now, but to show you all of that kind of in culmination here, here's the accumulated precipitation over the next 10 days for the whole country by the GFS model. We see some strong onshore flow, which we'd expect this time of year, keeping things wet out west. But <clears throat> look at the center part of the country here. You know, we're talking a, a relatively dry next 10 days. That's all thanks to that broader ridge that's going to be sitting up over the southwestern United States. Okay, let's look longer term. This is a couple of days ago when the long range ECMWF came out, but it does show that the persistence of that troughing feature here over the uh, eastern part of the United States. But as we get into December, I'm starting to get some hints from our longer range models, plus an analog technique that I use, where we might see for just a little while at the beginning of December, this broader ridge shift toward the central and maybe even the eastern part of the country. Now at this point, I have some pretty low confidence in this because persistence would tell me, hey, we've seen this pattern established now for several weeks. It would take quite a bit to break this down, but the atmosphere can do that. I'm just telling you that I want you to be on the lookout for maybe the start of December to see a bit of a shift in the overall pattern, maybe bringing this ridge over to the eastern half of the country. But don't get, you know, don't get excited that we're looking toward another warm winter. The longer range forecast that I've been producing aided by, you know, some of the great long range weather models that exist suggest that maybe this is more what our whole winter picture may look like. Uh, maybe not quite this warm through most of the western United States, but uh, certainly going to be warm in the southwest with maybe a more persistent, you know, trough like pattern going through the eastern part of the country. So again, that's longer range. The long range ECMWF is picking up on a drier pattern over the next month here where it's just that same region where dry to start to develop. So we're going to have to keep a close eye on that. Certainly going to be dry there for the next 10 days. And also you can see the impacts of that strong onshore flow in the western part of the United States. Now, quickly, let's talk Brazil. This is your latest um, soil moisture storage map. We've seen some major recovery once the South American Convergence Zone has set up uh, restoring moisture to the soil in this part of, of Brazil. Again, Mato Grosso, Goiás, getting all the way down here to Rio Grande do Sul. These are the major growing areas uh, in, in Brazil and certainly seen moisture returning to these areas. But what you're watching here is the next 10 days of accumulated precipitation. This is very normal for Brazil. Now, what all this means is we've been discussing how we had a delay in planting simply because these rains were a little bit late in arriving. And that delay in planting has put Brazil in some locations between 6 and 10% behind uh, normal. Now, uh, what that means, and, and by the way, in some locations, it, it, it's, it's much worse than that. But what that means overall is while this may have a, a small impact, if the rest of the growing season goes well on soybeans, this is going to push the safrina crop back. And that's one of the things that I'm starting to key in on as the big pressure that I'm going to be watching, you know, moving forward. But certainly the next 10 days, as you see here, are looking very wet in the models for Brazil's major growing areas. So with that, I think I'll go ahead and wrap up this forecast video. We hope you look forward to AgWell's next Ag Forecast coming out later this week. To get Morning Farm Report for your operations, complete with a daily email that shows you a snapshot of your field conditions each morning, go to morningfarmreport.com. Sign up for that free account. Full grower accounts are free if you sign up for our sustainable yield program or for growers who work with aided merchandisers. I thank you for your attention, and if you don't hear from me again, have a fantastic Thanksgiving, and keep a very close eye on the weather for the next 10 days. Talk to you soon.